Good afternoon, fellow citizens. We in the United Progressive People, UPP, seize this occasion to address our nation on what has become a menace. Witchcraft, magic, occultism, and all kinds of evils that have beset our country cannot be taken for granted. For these, often not discussed you no know, problems, are real and deeply entrenched. We therefore address you on this subject comprehensively. And our prayer and hope is that those of you who have this opportunity to listen, to watch, will share knowledge to the other. Where there is no vision, there is perishing. Without knowledge, there is perishing. And this is beyond religion. We will start with magic. And witchcraft. What is magic? What is witchcraft? This is the exploitation of supernatural powers by formulaic recitations to achieve goals that are otherwise unrealizable. Magic or witchcraft is simply the exploitation of supernatural powers by formulaic recitations to achieve goals or ends that are otherwise unrealizable or unachievable, meaning unachievable, meaning that under normal circumstances, all things remaining equal, certain goals or aims cannot be realized. But the use of magic or witchcraft brings about undeserved, unrealizable goals for that matter to pass. This is what is called magic or witchcraft. Is this anywhere in the scriptures? And we are happy that we are speaking to a nation that uh, you know, professes Christianity. Leviticus, or in Hebrew, Vaikra, chapter 19, verse 31, reads, I'll read in the, in the original Hebrew text and then explain in English. Al Tifinu El Haovot Ve El Haikaitu Onim Al Tevakishu Leta Maa Behem Ani Adonai Elohechem. What does this mean in English? Ten ye unto me, or ten ye not, ten ye not unto the ghosts, nor unto familiar spirits. Seek them not out, to be defiled by them, I am the Lord your God. Now this is found in Leviticus chapter 19 verse 31. Now when you read the entire portion from 19 verse 1 through on, you would find that the Almighty was speaking to the children of Israel. He started by saying, Be ye holy, because I, the Lord your God, am a holy. And in fact, this portion in Hebrew is in the portion of Parashat called Kedo Hashim, meaning it's talking about holiness, the call of Israel to holiness. Now, where else do we find um, you know, evidence in the Bible of how? forces of nature, supernatural powers can be manipulated to achieve goals that are otherwise unrealizable. Samuel 1, chapter 28, verse 9. You recall that King Saul, the first king of Israel, went to consult with a medium. He asked this medium, he disguised himself as a king because apparently witchcraft had been banned. So he disguised himself and went to the medium 
And then he asked this woman to call forth the spirit of Shemuel or Samuel. So the spirit of Samuel was called from the dead. And he appeared. And Samuel, the prophet, judged so. He said, why have you disturbed me from my sleep? He was dead. And he was told that he was going to lose and that he was going to lose the battle. He died accordingly. Now, when you read again in Exodus chapter 22, verse 18, witchcraft or magic is punishable by death penalty. For it says, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Now, what are the biblical accounts of magic, witchcraft, and sorcery? And we want you to pay particular attention, fellow citizens, because this message that we deliver today may be just one of the most important life-saving messages that will redeem our country from this menace. Sia One has just probably helped us to draw attention to witchcraft, to magic, because this has left no corner in our republic. There are magicians of Pharaoh, as we are aware, where Moshe in Hebrew, or Moses, was called to deliver the children of Israel, and he went with his brother Aaron, or Aaron. Uh, you know the biblical accounts how whatever miracle, whatever powers that Moshe tried to exercise or to display, the magicians of Pharaoh did the same. That's number one. Number two, Prophet Elijah, remember, at Mount Carmel, there were 450 prophets of Baal. And Mount Carmel was a contest of the righteous prophet of the Almighty, Eliyahu, in Hebrew, or Elijah, against the false prophets. These false prophets were prophesying in the name of Baal. They had the spiritual eyes, just like Elijah had spiritual eyes. But the question was, whom are you serving? Elijah said, let God be God on this day. Number three, there was a widespread practice of Canaanite magic, magical art or sorcery in the divided monarch of Israel, the ancient kingdom of Israel. And the Bible is replete with such examples of how magical powers were being used to manipulate destinies, to destroy lives. Number four, Jezebel. Jezebel practiced sorcery. When you lead Melachim, that is Kings 2, or 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 22, you'd find that the Bible is very clear about the sorcery that Jezebel, Queen Jezebel, are practiced. Number five, we'll be quick, because we want to get to the root of this issue. Hebrew seers and diviners practiced magic arts. When you read Micah, chapter 3, verse 7, and please take note and take time to study the scriptures that we are giving you because you are Christians. Zambia is a Christian state. and you, I believe I'm speaking to people with basic knowledge of the Bible, if you claim to be Christians. Micah, chapter 3, verse 7, talks about Hebrew seers and diviners who practiced magic art. It's an art. Today we see magicians, those that who like entertain, what you see happening the manipulations you see magicians do are the same manipulations that are applicable in witchcrafts. Number six, women wore charms. In our local language, we call it Ifitumwa. Prophet Elijah warned against Ifitumwa or charms. Read Isaiah or Yeshahawi in Hebrew, Isaiah chapter 3, verses 18 to 23. He was warning against wearing ifitumwa. Today, it's not just about women, but men as well. Go to workplaces, people wearing ifitumwa, bambina waka kapi ifitumwa, bambaka kere misale shabo, ifitumwa, all around. And we think that those ifitumwa will give us luck, those ifitumwa will give us supernatural powers to get what we would normally not get under normal circumstances. In other words, in a meritorious system, we wouldn't get those things. So manipulation is used in the process. Now, here are the things to, uh, to note immediately. 
magic was considered as an aspect of pagan wisdom. This is very important to note, number one. Number two, magicians were counted as wise men. Read Psalm 58, verse 5, Daniel chapter 1, verse 20. Magicians were also counted as officials of foreign governments. Read Genesis, or Bereshit, Genesis chapter 41, verse 6, Daniel chapter 2, uh, verse, uh, uh, verse 2. So in other words, today we have the use of all these words, wise men and all that. These were ancient magicians whose powers cannot be questioned. In other words, there is power in witchcraft, just as there is power the power of powers in the Almighty God. There's also power in witchcraft. Whoever says there's no witchcraft is a baby. Witchcraft exists. What are the instruments or tools of magical witchcraft? Number one, spells. Joshua chapter 10 verse uh, 12. Number two, hair. The hair that you see can be used as an, an element. Is this biblical? Is this in the Bible? Where hair was used, manipulate destinies? Yes, Judges chapter 16, verse 17. Clothing, the clothing that you see, can be used as contact points to manipulate destinies. Read 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 13 to 14. Magic stuffs. Exodus chapter 7, verse 9. Hands, these hands that you see, the hand is a get. It can be used just by an evil handshake, evil laying of hands, because we are so quick to want people to lay hands on us. Can destinies be manipulated by false prophets who are preaching in the name of the Gospels, they are coming to Zambia, because Zambia is too porous, it's too open? Yes, 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 11. Hand, the hand, the hands. Number six, belomancy or bolomancy. What is belomancy or bolomancy? This is divination by use of arrows or dart. Greeks, Arabs, and Babylonians are the masters in this kind of witchcraft. Read 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 20 to 22. And these practices we are talking about, this witchcraft, don't think that they only exist in our republic, they also exist in Europe. Astrology, there are people who go to consult astrologers, there are people also go to consult. You know, those mediums, those who are able to tell, let's say someone is dead, they can't discover the body. We have seen police in developed countries go to such mediums to lead them to where the body is. So, so they use such magical powers to be able to detect or to tell. So the fact that somebody is prophesying, somebody is talking about what will happen tomorrow, it does not make them holy, you know, people at all. Then there is hydromancy. What is hydromancy? Hydromancy, this is divination by means of signs derived from the, from the appearance of, of water and its movements. And this is in Exodus chapter 15, verse 25. There are people who have been cursed. You wonder, you are working very hard, nothing is happening. And yet, your water was used as an element that you shall be as unstable as water. And uh, such things do happen. That's number seven. Number eight, demonic blessings by laying of hands. Read, when you look at, when I'm talking about demonic um, you know, blessings, this goes with number nine, that is cases. Remember in Numbers chapter 23 verse 12, how Balaam was had to curse the children of Israel. The only reason why Balaam, Balaam was both a magician and a prophet, could not curse the children of Israel because the Almighty had already intended to bless them. And he said, I cannot curse whom the Lord has blessed. So it matters, therefore, how you did your life. Number 10, dreams. There are projections that are made in dreams and witchcraft or magic are practiced to manipulate people. Whispering, 2 Samuel, chapter 12, verse 19. Then apart from that, by the way, we're not talking about cases. We also need to read Psalm 101, verse, uh, Psalm 109, verse 28, and to understand what we are talking about. Now let us deal with witchcraft in Zambia, having given that background, because we want to move quite surgically or methodically in order to have a deeper understanding of these things that we are talking about. Number one, 
witchcrafts are as ancient as all the tribes that we have in Zambia. Number two, conjuring of the spirits of the dead. This, as we have read in the Bible, where the spirit of Prophet Samuel, the holy man for that matter, was conjured. How about the spirits of people who are, who are dead? Some, they conjure the spirits of their ancestors. And when I'm talking about these things, when I'm talking about the practice of witchcraft, others got the graveyard, and they'll conjure the spirit. They will tell the dead that if you are stupid that you are dead, then do not arise to collect so-and-so to be with you. And these things do happen. Premature death happening. And there's nothing when I'm talking about superstition. This is beyond superstition. We are talking about this earth being a battleground, being real. No wonder we need to be equipped with this knowledge. Number three, transformation or transforming of objects into snakes or lions. In Zambia, those who are older than we are, our Fiashibes, Swift Codway, our ancestors, know about what happened when Namuelewu on Shlai Kampa. Apparently, uh, a visitor um, on the way in one of the villages uh, sought a uh, shelter overnight with his wife and then uh, the king loved the wife. I'm talking about what happened. These are not, uh, are not tales. This is real life story, what I'm telling you. And then in the end, uh, this young person you know, decided to bewitch or to kill the, the owner of the wife because he loved the wife, he slept with the wife. And then that person, uh, in the end, there are things that happened, went to consult some, s s those that had magical powers. And then they created a lion, which began to kill the people. This is real, the issue of Namuelewu and Nishirai Kampa, those who understand history, what I'm talking about. I grew up partially, you know, in a village. I was born in Lusaka, grew up partly in the village and back to Lusaka, of course. And, and I really thank the Almighty that, uh, that, that I partly had my life in the village to understand some of these things that we are talking about. There was a case of Bashimu and Balemi in the village that I grew up. Now, there are things that are not going to for what he did, and then those people that he did those things to, they manufactured a lion, a magic lion. It, it killed him as people are watching the entire village. Ate him, where have you heard that the lion has eaten a person? Ate him entirely, and then it left the head only. And then the lion picked the head and showed the people and left the head and disappeared. And was buried right at that spot where he was killed. And today, the same site, even when they are doing, it's near this college which has been built near Kalense village. In Kasama, these things I'm talking about happened. Others who create hyenas to go and attack their enemies. Magical hyenas. People are seeing a hyena, they just want a hyena. It's an arrow which has been sent to go and kill a life. Four, manipulating elements. What are these elements? Fire, earth, water, and air. Ulukatu. In the villages, where these things are real to this day, including urban areas, there are such manipulations going on, where they will pick the footmarks of somebody and they will begin to speak to the earth to find the person, to read his movements or her movements and kill the person. These things do happen. And the manipulations will happen by manipulating all these elements I'm talking about to bring disease, accidents, you know, and death, eventually. Five, love potions, palibekan too. Palibekan too, palibekan too. Our uh, women going to line up before these people that have such love potions. That's witchcraft. You are trying to manipulate somebody to love you. It's witchcraft. And these things do work, except that they have uh, their, their terms and conditions. Sometimes somebody will get it to and they'll say, no, you cannot um, eat uh, meat, you cannot eat this and that. They give all kinds of conditionalities. Number six, prosperity. Quick. Get rich quickly. Number seven, you know, casing businesses of competitors and locking promotions. Yes, someone highly qualified, but a person who has never entered the university, who has never entered the college is promoted. A college is promoted. And you start wondering what is happening. Manipulations in high places. Number eight, closing wombs. There are some people, they can never have children. Not because they are not better than God to, 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 to science. Everything is perfect. But they cannot simply have, you know, you know children. They can't bear children. Number nine, confusing bosses in workplaces to get undeserved promotions. If you too much, if you too much. I do remember in 2006, before Manuasa announced his cabinet, all the MMD front bench, you know, people, those who are, who are, who are expecting to be, to be ministers, they disappeared that week were not seeing them in the house. They went to their villages. 
And when they returned before cabinet was, was announced, the day before cabinet was announced, they, they returned to the house, uh, you could see you were trying to greet someone, they wouldn't extend the, their hands. They knew what they are going to do. And what I'm talking about, I'm talking about our leaders right in parliament. Somebody is entering the, 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 the door by reverse, because that's the condition which was given. You can't touch them this side, they will do like this. I remember at one time, one, somebody who is still actually a minister in the current government, I, I touched this person here like I'm having the person. There was something here inside and then he, he did this. These are real things. That becomes too much. These are things that are happening in our country today. So we can't take these things for granted, that, the things that I'm talking about. And I do recall, by the way, after Manasa appointed cabinet, one of us in the backbench uh, uh, who was fond of Weckling actually uh, made the running comment and sent the house into laughter in parliament. He said, yeah, no man no mwela mu parliament wa pita. Yimirungu ya pita. Mm. When you came back, we were just smelling herbs. Now there is fresh air in the parliament. That person said it as a joke. And in fact, the MMD front benches were the first actually to laugh out loud. The entire house was sent into laughter. It appeared to be like a joke, but it is true. Others went to their you know, fake you know, pastors, you know, fake prophets. We are not saying fake prophets. We are not saying that these people don't give charms that work. They give charms that manipulate. And those charms work. Yes, yeah, the president is confused. Especially somebody is weak. He can't fire somebody, he can't act on somebody so who keep the president to keep maintaining or promoting the same trash and to start wondering what is happening. Manipulations. Ten. And progress on the entire village. There is a man in one village, to this day the village that I know, who has declared that as long as he lives in that village, there is no one who is going to build a house using bricks and uh, iron sheets. So people live in temporary kind of shelters, grass touched. You would cry, and yet there are people who have farms there in that, in that village I'm talking about. They make money, they run small stores, but he has vowed that whoever is going to build a house which, is, which has iron sheets will die. So I was asking them, but why can't you challenge him and build that? No, they said, we have seen people die. Whoever has attempted, they started showing me. Somebody that, here, yeah, look at the bricks. Within a week he died. Another one tried, within a week he died. So this man's threats are not empty. These things are happening in our own republic. Those of you who are development practitioners like myself, you'll agree that witchcraft in the villages, when you're facilitating development workshops, always comes up as an issue which is um, meditating against development and progress in our nation. Number 11, power to put in fifi darkness on political opponents and cast a spell on voters to see light on and deserving politicians. People just get confused in the last minute. You know, you know, and you're asking why does it work? These things work because when these people go to do all this kind of uh, of, of, of machination, this this kind of enchantments that I'm talking about, others will say if they want to get a vote from their tribesmen, they will say unless uh, the people who have not belong to my tribe shall vote for me, unless they are not a tribe Z like me, and then they will cast a spell. Now, as long as the people in that community too are somewhere also involved in some kinds of, of, of witchcraft practices, they will be confused because they submit to the same power. Now, if I do not submit to the same power save the living God, there is no way such incantations on judgments will not work. So the extent to which votes manipulated show the extent to which the people are worshipping idols, to which the people are serving two masters. They are carrying the Bible, but at the same time, they are serving Baal, like the prophets of Baal. This is what is happening in our country. Casting a spell of madness on able people, suddenly somebody will be confused. There is no history of madness in their family. Somebody just gets confused. Number 13, casting a spell of fear among citizens. We have rulers who do this. They just cast a spell of fear, and there's a face of the covering which is cast upon the people. This has befallen our country. Now, witchcraft acknowledgement in the Christian Nation Declaration. President Frederick uh, you know, Titus Jacob Chilo, on that 29th day of December 1991, when he declared Zambia as a Christian nation, he clearly led Zambia into repentance. And if you read the words or watch that video, he said, Lord, we repent of corruption. We repent of witchcraft and the occulty. These were the words of the president right at the State House. And he said, I identify myself with this villa, State House, as an altar, and I therefore dedicate Zambia. To you, O oh Lord, 
Before that, he repented of witchcraft. The president acknowledged that there was witchcraft. Chiluba did not repent on behalf of Zambia as a matter of fashion. Not at all. It is real. It is real, this thing that I'm talking about. How about the widespread witchcraft, you know, today? People are seeking miracles. Africa has become a country or a continent of people who seek miracles. They want to live in miracles. They don't want to wait. We want instant money, just like there is instant coffee. Everything must be instant. <laughs> you know, and when I'm talking about the declining uh, you know, business, because there are all these churches that are exercising the same magical powers that uh, witch doctors do exercise, the witch doctor business has declined. So these witch doctors have found their way into the churches. Because people love magical stuff. Can you imagine you are told, you want a blessing and then you are told, no, please, uh, may the Almighty bless you. Please go. In Africa, we want something complicated. They say, well, just like that, you say, may God bless you. At yes. Say, no, no, no. What we want is somebody will tell you, please, go and bring 20 chickens and then three goats. One goat uh, must, uh, must have a big eye. The other goat must have a small eye. You go and bring a goat, and then in the middle of the night, you take one chicken, you take its blood, you put leaves in there, you put the grass, you put the chani, you put the misu, you put tamafi, and then you now go and stand at the junction of the road, and then you undress, then you begin to say, hey, promotion, hey, I win the election, hey, I possess the gate, quite cheap. And then as that cheap is doing like that, these are things that we want. When you hear something very complicated, you say, ha, this is power, it sounds very powerful. When you go to consult your, your own doctors, uh, even all these false prophets that we have in the church, when they are doing some things like magic, they'll create something, they'll float in the air, they'll get the water, it will turn like whatever. We love such things. Such, ah, this is power. That's what we want. We can't just believe in the one true God who lives. Who doesn't want you to do all these kind of magical things, all these manipulations, but just call upon his name and he blesses you. We have left like one bondage, then we have gone to another form of bondage. Religion in its current form as it, as it is being practiced, I'm telling you, has destroyed the continent. It has been more destructive to the continent than it has been constructive. And then we have also, number three, a situation of lack of standards and regulations of which we preach. Because somebody was a witch doctor today, they'll say, no, no, now we have accepted the Christ, and therefore now they are leading a change. They have never gone to any Bible school. They don't understand the Bible. They will just be preaching on the basis of one scripture. Others who call, will find churches, chase the devil ministries. In the morning, they are chasing the devil. In the afternoon, he comes back. In the, in the morning, they are chasing the devil again. Chase the devil ministries. <laughs> the power of whatever ministries. Chimu gudu, gudu, gudu ministries. These are things that we like. And, and we love something complicated. Others are being called um, a revival power, instant you know, Miracle Ministries International. International, you know, Naveshkuru at International. That's international. <laughs> it's just a joke that we have in our country. International ministry, everything is international. Because they want to be international. Even when they are just in a little, little under the tree, they are saying, we are international. 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 Jokers. Number four, when, when witchcraft does not work, because sometimes, like I said, when you find somebody who, who prays genuinely, Witchcraft does not work. Then jealousy among witchmakers will ensue. So in the end, they resort to physical, physical attempts to eliminate their opponents because jealousy is the biggest problem we have in our country. We don't celebrate intelligence, no. So in the end, they will poison someone physically. We have heard of such cases in workplaces, the boss is poisoned. These are real cases I'm talking about in our, in our country. Jealousy is one of the biggest problems that we have apart from corruption and state capture in our republic because the capture has also brought about spiritual capture. We are porous spiritually to all kinds of nonsense coming from other nations. Number five, cultism for miracle money or instant wealth. Others even go, they go to Dubai, they go to India. If they find that, um, that their magical powers are not enough, they go to India from sacrificing a goat, they will sacrifice their children, they will sacrifice grandchildren. Not to just get the powers for momentarily gains. So we even have imported witchcraft, just like we have imported bambas from China. Imported bambas, imported uh, uh, whatever you call those things. These things are real. We are importing witchcrafts. 
What are the legal issues and the framework in treatment of witchcraft in Zambia to show that it's real? Because you create a law when there's a real problem. Zambia does have the Witchcraft Act of Zambia, Chapter 90 of the Laws of Zambia. Witchcraft Act, Chapter 90 of the Laws of Zambia. Now, this Witchcraft Act of 1994, which was repealed in, as a repeal of 1993, Witchcraft Act, which is also a repeal of an ordinance, the Witchcraft Act Number 47 of 1948, before independence, colonial masters did acknowledge that there was witchcraft. So it's not a job. But I know of one village where this bamboo priest said that these things don't work. He said, ah, <laughs> bamboo, they don't work. No, they don't work. A white priest in Zambia said, all right, we'll teach you that it works. That priest found himself when he woke up sleeping in the graveyard. He couldn't believe it. That day he packed and he left that village. These things that I'm talking about. I also know a village in the neighboring village where whenever it was raining, there was this man. He just did this. And then he was walking, it's raining. And then he was not getting soaked. He just did this. And he was walking. I'm talking about what I saw. He was walking. I also do remember during the campaigns, in 2006, as a, as a member of parliament, we are saying this is a, a university uh, graduate just talking to he can't win. Now, these men I was contending against were very powerful. From nowhere, speakers would stop playing. Brand new speakers. The vehicle just ceased. And I saw oil poly coming out of the, 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 the what do you call this thing? The, the thing which keeps oil, I've forgotten. What, what, I mean, the sample, we call it sample. So now I checked. Oil, oil, oil is coming out, but I checked. The sample was normal. But, but oil is coming out. I tried to check for the crack. There was no crack. Prayed and prayed with the team. Suddenly the vehicle started. And it's as if no oil. I, we checked the oil. The oil levels were back to normal. I'm talking about real things. Another time I recall a day before filing of nominations. Where, you know, there are things I cannot go into because you think that what are these things? Real, you see real contentions, these things that I'm talking about, that they do happen. There are many righteous, for many evil leaders must lead in Zambia. But if we don't pray for our own liberation, liberation, for our own redemption, if we don't pray for the right kind of leadership, we shall always be manipulated by the same kind of crooks that we have in power, the same worshippers of, of all these uh, you know, idols who use magical powers to gain uh, uh, of power. Now, let us look at the Witchcraft Act, uh, Chapter 90 of the Laws of Zambia. Section 2 defines witchcraft as throwing of bones, the use of charms, and any other means, process, or device adopted in the practice of witchcraft or sorcery. This is Section 2 of Cap 90's definition of what witchcraft is in Zambia. But when you look at this definition, it's as vague as witchcraft itself in reality. Because you, if you say, can you see witchcraft? So no, you, you can't see witchcraft. It's magical. You can't see it. But you see things happening. And therefore, its definition, therefore, remains quite elusive. Which, this is not so clear. It's, it's vague. Now, go to section 5. The penalty for profession of knowledge of witchcraft. There is a penalty to profess that they have magical powers. The worst year one is that they profess openly. And in fact, it would be very interesting because if you think that that person is just bluffing, no, it's not. I know what I'm talking about when I say I'm, I know what I'm talking about. We have a tendency. Look at how many politicians. Somebody is elected mayor. The first person who go is a pastor maybe that I've never heard of. And is there. Somebody even dedicates the entire salary to that person. Oh, my entire salary will go to this man. Meanwhile, this person, tomorrow is found in the Catholic Church. The other day is everywhere. They bring, they take a Catholic priest. In. Oh, please, let's come and have mass in my office. The following morning, you find them, they are dancing. With the same people that they are calling, no, see, one is fake. We have seen people going there. These things are real. They go because they, have, they see the powers. They are attracted to what is powerful. And desperate rulers want to go for everything. Now they want to go for imported magical powers. And they go in dark corners. No, I'm a minister, I'm honorable so and so. Oh, no, please, I'm contending to be MP. Oh, I want to be president, please. I need these powers. These are the ones that we want. Those who speak the truth who say to be president or to be minister, work very hard, save the poor people. We don't want them. So, anyone, according to Section 5, the penalty for profession of, of knowledge of 
witchcraft. But by saying I use magical powers, just confession. Subsection A of section 5 of chapter 90 says, any person who presents himself as able by supernatural means to cause fear, annoyance, or injury to another in mind, in a person or property, or B, subsection, uh, uh, paragraph B of section 5, pretends to exercise any kind of uh, supernatural power, witchcraft, witchcraft, um, you know, the witchcraft is sorcery, or enchantment calculated to cause such fear, annoyance, or injury, shall be liable to a fine of not more than 1,500 units, or to imprisonment with or without hard labor for any term not exceeding two years. So there's a two-year imprisonment for just professing that they have magical powers. How many people on the pulpits today profess to have such powers? They are talking about the powers and, the, and they're even instilling fear in the church. There are many people today who go to different churches who are under capture. Just as the state is under spiritual capture, we have churches where members are under capture. They are fearing the so-called papas. It's not, they are no longer preaching, preaching the Almighty. They are no longer preaching the right message. They are preaching themselves. If you don't bring this, I see you death. Every morning they are prophesying. I see death. Mm, death. Death. Mm, yes, death, 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 death. This person starts with M. The name starts with M. I'm seeing death. Yes, I'm Mary. I'm Maria. Yeah, 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 papa, 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 papa. Mm, you know, that says the Lord. Bring your car. No, that says the Lord. Bring your house. People are doing these things I'm talking about. Out of fear. And they are no longer saving no matter. These people, they can't even report. These are accounts that must be dealt with right in the church. You are looking for corruption among politicians. There's corruption going on by all kinds of spirit right in the church. Section 6 sets out um, you know, acts that constitute witchcraft. It itemizes them. Then section 11 a possession of charms and um, it provides for possession for, for penalties for possession of charms and um, and the penalties thereof shall I say. So, and in fact, just to possess charms, you are liable upon conviction to pay two thousand penalty units, or to one year imprisonment, or both. Just to say, I have charms. <laughs> you know, then um, religion in, in Africa and Zambia in particular. First of all, to understand religion, to understand Christianity and Islam, we need to understand Judaism. Because all these are offshoots. Judaism is an offshoot of Judaism. Christianity is an offshoot of Judaism. Then, then Islam from you know, Christianity itself, and then takes some aspects of Judaism. So, here, in a nutshell, I know we know these things, but I just want to lay the foundation. First of all, Abraham is called to worship one true God, his parents, according to the Bible, they were idol worshippers. So idol worshipping, all these things are talking about, witchcraft, magic, they existed. They were a form of worship among the people. But that was described by the Almighty as idol worship. And he therefore separated Abraham, Abraham in Hebrew or Abraham in, in, um, in English to save one through God. This was confirmed through Isaac and Yaakov, or that is Isaac and Jacob. Then Joseph in Hebrew or Joseph in English was sold into slavery, and then he becomes the prime minister in Egypt. Jacob and the family move to Egypt. Israelites multiply. Then a new pharaoh emerges who did not know Joseph or Joseph. And then um, eventually enslavement of the children of Israel, labors, I mean, imposed on them. Then Moshe in Hebrew, or Moses in English, is called as a savior. Then the Exodus begins. Then Mount Sinai, where there was Matani Torah in Hebrew. Matani Torah is the giving of the Torah. So the written Torah is given to, uh, to Moshe, to, to B'nai Israel, the house of Israel, through Moshe. Now, apart from the written Torah, there's also the oral Torah, which spells out, because the Torah is like a man, then it spells out real-life issues, agriculture, warfare, uh, you know, cleanliness. There are all kinds of leadership, talking about local government. The Yitro, we call it the new PP, the Yitro, Yitro, uh, Yitro, you know, approach or Jethro approach in English, Jethro, meaning Jethro. Jethro tells Moshe that you, you see, you cannot manage to be to be the central, you know, 
um, you know, coordinating you know, power, delegate, which is like what I talk about law government today. These things are not new. Appoint judges, the people will be controlling the elders, I think over 70 they're about. Let them be judging and then they'll be reporting to you. So all these things are spelled out actually uh, in both the written, in the written Torah, but you have details in the oral Torah, which brings into action on how all these things are supposed to be actualized. Then eventually, Joshua, Joshua, or Joshua in English, lead, leads Israel to the promised land. Israel is instructed not to fall for either worship of the Canaanites. Then there's first judge, Samuel, the house of judges, then uh, of course with the prophets, then the house of kings, finally king Saul becomes the, king, the first king. Then we come to the period of the destruction of the first temple, before talking about the second temple. Remember that when you read the book of Judges, and we urge you to study, please, we do know that there's a very poor reading culture among us. Read the Judges. You see that every time that there was idol worship, falling for magic witchcraft, as Zambia is doing today, the nation was heavily punished by the Almighty. The moment the nation of Israel turned to the Almighty, they were forgiven. The Lord had mercy on them, and they were, there was restoration. No wonder the Bible says in 2 Chronicles, I think chapter chapter you know, 7 verse 14 that if the people who are called by my name shall humble themselves the first point is repent and turn away from their wicked ways then shall I hear and heal heal the land that's what it says so there must be an acknowledgement that we have heard that we have sinned this is humility to just keep calling on for prayer and fasting it doesn't say they shall call for prayer and fasting which is absolute nonsense going on in our country. You are saying prayer and fasting now, Udia, Nenda Mana, Weba, Nakafumo, Utmoka, Tolan Fifi, Nam Tot Matat, Nechibai, Wetchkuru, at no, let us go for prayer and fasting. Thieves, hypocrites. It's, we are talking about true humility. So eventually, the second temple is destroyed as well. But before the destruction of the second temple, remember, the children of Israel were already, already in exile. Then, first of all, before Continuing actually on this point, remember that we're not talking about the Jewish faith, Judaism. It's a heritage passed on from the patriarchs through to the current generation of the Jewish people that we have, who are called to save one true God, to be a light unto the nations. Judaism does not seek to convert because it's like a culture. You can't draw a line between what is religion, whether Judaism is a religion, is it a culture, is it a heritage? You can't draw the line. In the Bemba culture, when they say respect the elders, that's culture. So you can't say I'm converting to be a member. Or I'm converting to be, to, to be a lozy. You can speak lozy, but it doesn't make you lozy. You are a member. The Almighty made you, he made you a member. You are a member. So, therefore, there is no place like for evangelism, asking people to convert. To convert to what? Because this call was actually given to the children of, to, to, to the children of Israel. Now, Christianity. How did Christianity come about? Jesus is born during the period of the second temple. Yeshua in Hebrew and then from the beginning he said I did not come for the Gentiles I came to the lost people of Israel to the Jewish people to preach the Jewish people and then remember the story of a woman who wanted the child to be healed he says I cannot give meat which is meant for children to dogs he called the Gentile dog these things I'm talking about are in the Christian Bible dog I cannot do that then the story of the, woman, the Samaritan woman, where he says, salvation is of the Jews, that you Gentiles don't know who you worship. We the Jews know who we worship. This is what he was saying all these things. And through and through is very consistent. There are many, many, many things that now begin to emerge in the period of the apostles, you know, clearly. Yeah, that you see that, that, that when you look at this message, it was very clear because there is no Jew who seeks to convert other people. Not at all. And he says, I did not come to abolish the laws of Moses. Not the prophets, but to fulfill or to perfect what, 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 what those laws say. Hey, these things are right in the Christian Bible, the things I'm talking about. So, and then remember that the Roman Empire crucified him, and then eventually um, the, 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 the apostles, they remain observant Jews. Up to the time that they died, there is no apostle who went to pray talking about Sunday. There was nothing like that of all the 12 disciples. Not a single one went to worship on Sunday. They kept in, you know, the Shabbat, the laws of Moses. When you read the Acts of the, the, so Acts, the writings of the Acts of the Apostle, St. Paul repeatedly argues, but I'm doing this, I'm doing all this and that. So these things you find them. Then all early believers remain within the confines of Judaism. Then 
uh, Constantine changes, of course, from the calendar to Sunday, brings in Sunday. The Roman Empire adopts Christianity, addresses of the early church, remember the Catholic, the Crusaders, the Templars, and so forth. All evil kinds of atrocities. Then from there, Protestants and we begin to, to emerge. Protestant you know, churches break up from the Catholic Church to what we have you know, uh, you know, today. Then Islam, Prophet Muhammad. He was actually Catholic for that matter. Then he, find, he found Islam. And then from there, um, Islam first of all acknowledges Jesus as that, that is a prophet. But at the same time, they adopt some of the, the, the majority of the laws of, 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 of Moshe or Moses. Then scramble for Africa comes. Slavery. At the hands of Arabs who are Muslims, they started coming to Africa to trade in slaves, buying slaves. But at the same time, they have the Quran, Islamizing Africa. Believe all you no commits and so forth. Meanwhile, please give us the slaves. We want to sell them to Christian Western civilizations. That's number one. Number two, exploitation of Africa's resources. The scramble for Africa came at the same time with a twisted kind of Christianity. Westerners came, we are talking about France, Britain, Portugal, Belgium, among others. Tapping, or shall I say, exploiting Africa's resources. Our minerals, our timber, name it, for exploitation, began to take place. Christianity and Islam at the same time began to flourish during the same period we are talking about. And religion, as it came, focused on one heavenly salvation and martyrdom. No push for Sharia law, push for this and that, then you'll be martyred. You're going to find 72, 72 virgins. Certain the people of Africa, Africa who knew love started now being radicalized. Christianity also reduced the people to just being, you know, prayers, pray, pray, pray to the Almighty. And so, meanwhile, they're giving them food, aid. First of all, the people were pushed out of fatal land, the people of Africa. If somebody lectures to us that nobody were tribal wars, that is absolute nonsense. There were wars everywhere. In all the kingdoms, it's only a stupid person who will say, no, but Africa was not there because there were wars. That's nonsense. There are so many wrong things that were happening around the nations everywhere, but Africa was well organized. Suddenly, fertile land was taken away from our own republic. And this land which was condemned to which Africans were taken. Meanwhile, they were being given the Bible. They were being taught to pray the morning, to pray the rosary, or to do all these kinds of things. This is salvation. You have your heavenly treasures in heaven. And poverty for the sake of heaven. Be poor for the sake of the kingdom. Which is actually even misunderstood, misconstrued. Indoctrination to believe as gospel truth that whatever preachers said without question is coming from, from heaven. Opposition against preachers is suddenly taken to be opposition against the Almighty. Here is a stealing preacher. They are stealing our God. They are stealing our, our timber, our, our resources. And they are telling us they are telling our people, pray every morning. This is the, your treasures are in heaven. Meanwhile, their nations are prospering. And then, how many people come to Africa to this day? Africans are taken to be like beggars. Like, these are people who can just beg. And yet, Africa is the ancient mother of civilization. It's the mother of humanity. And then they want you to believe that you cannot stand on your own. This is how destructive all these things I'm talking about the region has been to Africa. Africans would rather spend time you know, pushing for Sharia law. Africans would rather spend time talking about prayer and fasting and voting for people who carry big Bibles. We don't want to listen to knowledge. We don't want to learn from the Jewish people who have prospered through ingenuity. They know that it's by hard work that they are few, but they must work very hard in science and technology. They must invest in education and never wait for a miracle. Should a miracle happen, they will say, yes, we did our very best as human beings. Now, this what has happened is supernatural. But even when a miracle happens, they want to examine it to ensure that it's a real miracle. Because these are things that, that can be done. So the biggest miracle is creation. If the Almighty himself will read by a sheet, read by a sheet, by a Adonai, what the Lord said, let there be this and this and this and this. At the end of creation, he says, he rested. After waking that, he worked for six days. Who are you and I today not to talk about work, to expect miracles to fall? Who are you and I? And they, we can learn from the Jewish people. Who don't want to wait for miracles? Many people say, no, Jews have rejected Jesus. Jews have no reason whatsoever to believe in Jesus. If you think that Jews would believe in Jesus because of miracles, you are mistaken. That he raised the dead. Elisha, 
prophet Elisha. His bones, a dead prophet Elisha, his bones raised a dead person. They were taking this man to bury, they, they, saw, they saw like enemy soldiers, they dropped the body. This body fell on the bones of Elisha in Hebrew or Elijah in, in English. The person came back to life and they're talking about it, about it, about no, 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 raising the dead. Those are not miracles that remove any Jew. Because they believe that if you are talking about miracles to happen, the nation of Israel has been saved in ways that you cannot believe. The restoration of the current Jewish state is testimony. A nation forgotten about exiled for more than 2,000 years, restored back to the land as was prophesied by the prophets. They are the people of the books. They are the people who believe in ingenuity, who believe that they have to work in order to survive. While we are waiting for miracles to happen, what kind of a religion is that which tells you to have miracles? So we have some kind of power. The power is in knowledge. When you wake up, you are the biggest miracle. And the first thing, for instance, that every Jew would do upon waking up is to check himself and then thank the Almighty that, that, that he has woken up to go and do good for others. This is the only way. This truth is what will build Zambia. There is no economic prosperity whatsoever which will come by prayer and fasting and carrying big Bibles. If that were the formula, that prayer and fasting is what brings economic prosperity and wealth, I'm telling you Zambia would have been the richest among the nations in the world. Why is Saudi Arabia, which is not a Christian nation, prospering? United Arab Emirates, people don't pay taxes there. People share in the, the, the oil resources that they have. There's no pay as you earn in Saudi Arabia. Bahamas is not a Christian state, so to speak. There's nothing like in the constitution they have said they're a Christian state. Look at Bahamas, they have no minerals, but the nation is as prospered. People don't pay pay as you earn. They share what they make from profits of tourism. They have become a tourist destination. So, look at Europe, with all kinds of things going on in Europe. Because there are few people who are spiritual. Christianity is dying in Europe, for instance. But why is it that there is still prosperity there? So if you are talking about prosperity just by carrying the Bible and being concerned to your holy grave that, no, because I have stored my treasures in heaven, therefore, let me save all these useless things going in the church, let me save Sia one, let me go and get the powers and so forth from there. And then you go early to your grave and you think that you're going to find treasure in heaven. The first thing I think that you receive is a trap for being stupid. For having not done the things that you are supposed to do. For having not saved the mighty. For having not have developed your talent to make the world a better place. The first thing you receive, I'm telling you, is a slap for being stupid. Miracles as a way of life cannot be the central focus as we were being taught by this kind of you know, flawed regions that came to, to the continent of Africa. Now, what is the alternative UPP policy on this matter start up the state of our country? As we have said, we are not going to do on CIA1. All those who went to CIA1, they know it. And I can assure you that those are not just empty statements. That's not empty rhetoric. Pastors, presidents, state houses, borders, whichever person comes, they want imported powers also. Please, that person, fast track to state house to go and meet the president. Fast track to go and meet ministers. Fast track. Ministers won't even be like to have VIP, VIP treatment. First in the line to go and see the so-called uh, men of God, the men of God when they come, perceived to have their powers. That's what has become of, of our country. We are forgetting about the powers that we have. We are stealing. How much is leaving the shores, the, 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 uh, leaving the country? We have copper, we have emeralds. Eight billion dollars. We know first quantum minerals cheated of, through fraudulent taxation, fraudulent accounting of ZCCM, our own man. Eight billion dollars, which is more than the national budget. State House intervenes, drop the case. Who is benefiting? We have gold, we have emeralds. And we want to be praying and praying and praying as resources are being taken out quite people. Now we can't like that, like that. No, we are a Christian nation. There must be, number one, as a matter of agency, legalization to equip legislation, shall I say, legislation to equip church mother bodies with instruments for self-regulation at national and community levels. It's time for proper regression to check what is happening. Check the doctrines, basic requirement in terms of qualifications and licensing. You can't just go and appear in America, for instance, and begin to preach. They want to know. Why did you do your theology? What is your theological orientation? Who trained you? I think this is very important. Number two, criminalize doctrines and instill, that, that instill fear to manipulate followers. Many people under capture today, I'm telling you, people can't report because they're in fear. 
Others, they can't even talk about their pastors or whatever. They'll think that he's hearing as, as if he's a God. Why are you serving man instead of serving the Almighty God? Law enforcement agencies must be given the power to act. The penal code must be clearly defined. It must actually clearly define, shall I say, what constitutes such doctrines as felonies. We've seen even developed economies like America, where there are courts, people are under capture, thousands. But eventually, federal law enforcement agencies go in to liberate the people. Zambia has reached that stage, where action must be taken to stop what is happening, the rot going on in our country. Number three, repeal and completely replace the entire witchcraft act. Number one, provide for a broad definition with clear acts that constitute witchcraft, that constitute, constitute manipulation and instilling fear in the citizens by the so-called uh, people are coming as fake all kinds of witch doctors coming to practice in the name of the church. Then create an authority to work with chiefdoms or kingdom, and kingdoms or kingdoms and councils to implement the law. Up to village level, there is fear in the country. People fear witches more than they fear God. I'm telling you the truth. They will fear a pastor more than they fear God. They will fear people, a, a wizard, more than they fear the Almighty. And they are living in fear in the villages. There are many people who want to do good in their own villages, but they can't do anything because of fear of all these things I'm talking about, fear of witchcraft. Provide for community-based and witchcraft educational programs. Create 24, you know, 6 or 24, 7 helplines for victims of witchcraft. These things happen I'm talking about. Provide for effective surveillance at com or community-based kind of mechanisms. There is need for surveillance to check what is happening in the Republic. We know that politicians are facing the queue, but this is a matter which you must deal with. There's need when the IPP propose, and this is in our manifesto, in our alternative plan, enactment of what is called Agriculture and Rural Development Act, add. Agriculture and Rural Development Act, add in abbreviation. This must have a framework for rural housing and the standards that when somebody's building a house, if there's a witch, this person says, this is the law, I'm implementing the law. And if you're against the law, you're going to be picked, you're going to be arrested. There must be rural development and also to ensure that there is what is called Development Education Programs, or DEP. This is very important to educate the people to know that Africa can only be developed by fellow Africans. And there must be reforms in agriculture, bring about agro-processing, and do all that we can to transform our country. Fellow citizens, Zambia is waiting for saviors. And we in the UPP call you to come from your caves to stand up for Zambia and stop the nonsense. Stop the nonsense happening right now in the church, in the name of religion. Look at manipulations that are going on in our country. This cannot go on. We have Zambia before us and we have to stand up and stop the road. And let us also redefine what we need. The debate must not be about magical powers or witchcraft. The debate must be about ideas or now we can build Zambia. The things that go viral in Zambia are shocking. Why should see a one go viral? And yet there are people who discuss brilliant ideas just as we are trying to share ideas. Such things don't go viral in Zambia. They don't go viral. The things that go viral are things that do not add not even 1% to our values or the rebuilding of our republic. Zambia must be freed. Thank you. God bless you. God bless Zambia.